Le ministre des enseignements secondaires a développé une plateforme d'enseignement à distance pour les élèves du secondaire au Cameroun. Une série d'enseignements dispensés par les enseignants de qualité pour les élèves du secondaire. Apprendre n'a jamais été aussi simple avec l'enseignement à distance. Une initiative du ministère des enseignements secondaires sous la supervision du professeur Nalova Lyonga en collaboration avec le ministère des Postes et Télécommunications, la CAMTEL, la CIRTV et l'UNESCO. Nous introduisons l'enseignement à distance comme une autre méthode d'enseignement et d'apprentissage qui diffère du cadre de classe traditionnel auquel vous êtes habitué. Dans le mot d'enseignement à distance, vous n'êtes pas avec l'enseignant en personne, alors prenez votre temps, détendez-vous, écoutez l'enseignant, prenez des notes et visitez les liens suivants pour toutes questions ou réponses à vos préoccupations. Allez-y à votre rythme la solution du Cameroun contre le Covid-19 et au-delà. Professeur Nalova Lyonga, ministre des enseignements secondaires. Welcome to this learning session. Welcome to this learning session. I am Fort Gala Nelson, a computer science teacher. I will be teaching you computer science for for for. In the first part of this session, we will focus on an overview of the Form 4 Computer Science syllabus, then we will see the objectives and the previous knowledge. The previous knowledge here refers to what you've done in the previous classes. That's necessary or that will ease your understanding of the content presented at this level. The content of at this level in this class is made up of four main modules. The first module presents computer organization and data representation. The second examines concepts of software development. The third develops skills of digital citizenship in the learner. And the fourth called computational thinking presents concepts of solving algorithmic problems. The fourth, computational thinking, presents concepts of solving algorithmic problems. Each module will attain the following objectives. Apply methods of encoding characters and positive numbers. Describe each phase of the software development life cycle. Describe the impact of digital citizenship on personalities and write simple algorithms. Being able to identify a given hardware, that is being able to know, to say that this is a mouse, this is a keyboard, or stating the components of a processor will enable your understanding of the module computer organization. Also, the ability to expose or to showcase responsible behavior on the cyberspace will ease your understanding of digital citizenship. Four, and the ability to solve basic algorithmic problems who is your understanding of software development and computational thinking. Our first module, entitled Computer Organization and Data Representation, consists of two main topics. The topic, computer organization, and the topic, data representation. The topic, data representation and coding is made up of four main subtopics. The subtopic, the number system, which will enable you to identify a number in a given base. The second subtopic, converting between number systems, will permit you to represent positive numbers as a series of zeros and ones. The third, information coding, will help you represent letters, characters, as a series of zeros and ones. 
and the fourth module, data measurement units, will enable you to state the different units of storage. The fourth module, the fourth, let's say, the fourth subtopic, data measurement units, will enable you to state to state the different units of storage. The second module, the second subtopic, the second topic, computer organization. The second topic, computer organization, is made up of three main subtopics. The first subtopic focuses on the components that make up the computer. The components that make up the computer. The second subtopic explains how these subcomponents communicate with each other. And the last topic, subtopic called the processor cycle, explains the general functioning of the component called the processor. <laughs> Our first lesson is titled The Number System. This lesson is planned as follows. The objectives, the prerequisites, which refers to the, uh, the knowledge you will use and that is necessary for the understanding of this lesson. Then, real life application of number systems after that, we'll present the concepts that will help us attain the objectives. We'll have an exercise that we'll do together and we'll conclude with an assignment. This lesson will enable you to do the following. One, state the four number systems, four popular number systems. Two, list the symbols of base two, base eight, and base 16 and 3 identify a number in a given number system identify a number in a given number system to ease your understanding of this lesson the ability to list the symbols of base 10 and identify a base 10 number is necessary Let's evaluate your, read your readiness for this lesson with an exercise. In this exercise, you are expected to list the symbols of base 10 and also to identify base 10 numbers in a given list of numbers. So, let's read the exercise. Question 1. List the symbols of base 10. Question 1. List the symbols of base 10. Question 2. Which of the following are base 10 numbers? We've been given a list. A. 1, 7, 4. B. 9, 0, A. C. 1, 0, 1, 0. And D. 1, 7, 4. Subscript 8. Which of the following are base 10 numbers? A, 1, 7, 4. B, 9, 0, A. C, 1, 0, 1, 0. And D, 1, 7, 4, subscript 8. Let's see the answers. Base 10 symbols. Base 10 has 10 symbols. And these symbols go from 0 to 9. They are 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Those are the symbols of base 10. Question number 2. Which of the following are base 10 numbers? It's good to know that base 10 numbers contain only symbols of base 10. Base 10 numbers contains only symbols of base 10. So for each number, we'll look at the symbols that are there and see if they are base 10 symbols. So let's start with the first number, 174. It contains the symbol 1, 7, and 4, which are all base 10 symbols. So 
174 is a valid base 10 number. The next number, 908, contains the symbols 9, 0, and 8. 8 is not a base 10 symbol. So 908 is not a valid base 10 number. See, 1010 one, zero, one, zero. contains the symbols 1 and 0, which are all base 10 symbols. So that is a valid base 10 number. And Z, 174 subscript 8. The subscript or the radix or the base of a number represents the base of that number. The base, the subscript, represents the base of a number. The subscript as shown represents the base of a number. 174 is thus a number in base 8. So it's not a number represented as a base 10 number because of the subscript also called the radix of the number. Let's now see a real life application of number systems. Let's wait the real life application. After showing his students base 10 symbols and examples of base 10 numbers, your younger brother's teacher informs him of the existence of base 2, base 8, and base 16. Then ask him to identify invalid representations of numbers given in the list below. The list is made up of the following numbers. 1121 base 10, 101 base 2, 39 base 8, 1211 base 8, FF base 16, and 1211 base 2. Your junior brother, looking at the numbers, sees FF as the invalid number. The teacher tells him he's not correct. You are expected here now to help your junior brother know why his answer is not correct. I am expected to explain to him by going through the following tasks. Task number one, you have to identify all the bases used to represent the numbers. Number two, you have to propose a list of symbols for each base. You have to state the symbols of each base. Tax number three. You have to propose a number in each base. And finally, you have to identify invalid numbers in the teacher's list. You have to identify invalid numbers in the teacher's list. To ease your answering or accomplishment, all these tasks, there are certain concepts we have to see. First concept we'll be seeing is the concept of number system. What is a number system? A number system is simply a method used to name numbers, a strategy, a technique used to name numbers. Examples of number systems are base 2, base 8, Base 10 and base 16. Base 2 has two symbols. Base 8 has eight symbols. Base 10 has 10 symbols. And base 16 has 16 symbols. But how do we get to know the symbols in the base? To get the symbols in the base, we write from 0 to the base minus 1. If the base is less than or equal to 10. To get the symbols of a base, we write from 0 up to the base minus 1. If the base is less than 10. If the base is greater than 10, we write from 0 to 9. Then continue with the letters of the alphabet from A up to until we complete the total number of symbols. So we start from 0 to 9. If three symbols are remaining, we go A, B, and C. For instance, let's consider base 2. 
also called the binary number system. This base has two symbols. And to get the symbols, we start from zero up to the base minus one. The base here is two, so start from zero up to one. The symbols of base two are those zero and one. Base eight, also called the octal system, has eight symbols. And the symbols go from zero to the base minus one. In this case, eight minus one, that is seven. The symbols of base eight are zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now base sixteen. Sixteen is greater than or equal to is greater than ten. Sixteen is greater than ten. So the symbols will go from zero to nine, and then the remaining symbols will be computed with letters of the alphabet. That is why base 16 has the following symbols, 0 up to 9, which gives 10 symbols, followed by A, B, C, D, E, and F, to complete it to the 16 symbols that make up base 16. It's good to keep in mind that a number in a given number system is gotten or obtained by combining the different symbols in the number system. So to name a number in a number system, or to create a number in a number system, we combine the symbols in that number system. And also, we write the base as a subscript at the end of the number. If a number has no radix, or no subscript, or no base written at its foot, then that number is assumed to be in base 10. Then that number is assumed to be in base 10. Let's now use the concept learned so far to do some exercises. Exercise 1, which is a repetition of a problem situation. A repetition of a real life application. Given the following numbers 1121, base 10, 101, base 2, 39, base 8, 1211, base 8, FF, base 16, and 121, base 2. Question number 1 Identify all the bases used to represent the numbers. Question number 2. State the list of symbols for each base. Question number three, give an example of a number in each base. And final question, check the list and see which ones are invalid numbers. So let's start by answering the first question. We want to identify the different number systems used in the set of numbers given here. We know that the radix of a number is its base, and the radix of a number is labeled as shown here. The radix of a number is labeled as shown here. Now let's take each number. 1121 one, one, subscript 10 or radix 10 or base 10. This is the radix or the base. The number is thus a base 10 number. Next number, 101, radix 2. The radix is 2. So the number is a base 2 number. Followed by 398, subscript 8. This is the base. So the base here is 8. Then 1211, 8, subscript 8. 8 is the radix. So the base here is. 8. FF, radix 16, the radix represents the base, the radix is the base, so the number is a base 16. And finally, 1, 2, 1, 1 is 2. Radix is 2. The number is in base 2. Thus, the bases used to represent the numbers are 
10, 2, 8, and 16. Let's now give the symbols used in each base. Base 10 has 10 symbols from 0 up to 9. Base 2 has 2 symbols. They are 0 and 1. Base 8 has 8 symbols from 0 up to 7. From 0 up to the base minus 1. And base 16 has 16 symbols from 0 up to 9, followed by A, B, C, D, E, F. We cannot write 1, 0, 1, 2, 1, 3 because a number is obtained by combining the symbols. And a symbol should not be obtained by combining other symbols. Symbols should be atomic. They should not be able to obtain by combining other symbols. That's why we don't continue with one zero, but we represent we replace it with A, followed by B, C, D, E, and F. Examples of number now. Examples of numbers. To obtain a number in a given number system, we just have to combine the symbols. So to obtain a base 2 number, what do we do? We create combinations of zeros and ones. Here we have 1, 0, 1. To create a base 8 number, combinations of base 8 symbols. Here we have 1, 2, 1, 1, base 8 as an example. And to have a base 16 number, or to obtain a base 16 number, combine base 16 symbols. Here we have F, F, base 16. And finally, let's see which numbers are valid amongst these numbers. Take a look at these numbers and see which one are valid. How do we get to know a valid number? A valid number is made up of symbols of the base or of the number system. So if we look at 3, 9, base 8, we see that base 8 symbols go from 0 to 7. So 9 is not a base 8 symbol. So this is not a valid base 8 number. Also, 1, 2, 1, 1, subscript 2, or base 2, has 2, which is not a valid base 2 symbol. So 1, 2, 1, 1, base 2 is not a valid base 2 number. So the numbers 39 base 8 and 1211 base 2 are not valid base 2 numbers. Are not valid base 2 and base 8 numbers. Another exercise for us. In this one, we're expected to answer with true or false and explain our answer in each case. Question 1 gives us a set of symbols and we're expected to see if those symbols are the symbols of base 8 or not. So the symbols are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we're supposed to see if they are symbols of base 8 or not. Question 2, we're given a number. 1, 2, 0, 1, base 2. And we're being asked to see if that number is a valid base 2 number or not. You are expected to look at the symbols that make up the number and see if they are made of only these two symbols. Question 3 gives us 0 up to 9, followed by A and B. And we are, they are asking us to state if true or false, all those symbols represent the symbols of base 11. Let's see the answers together. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 are symbols of base 8. True or false? When we count the number of symbols, it gives 9. Base 8 is supposed to have 8 symbols. Also, the symbols of base 8 are supposed to go from 0 up to the base minus 1. In this case, 7. Because of that, the answer is false. 
these symbols are not the symbols of base 8. Second question, 1, 2, 0, 1, base 2. Is it a valid base 2 number? A valid base 2 number should consist of only symbols of base 2. 2 is not a base 2 symbol. 2 is not a base 2 symbol. So, 1, 2, 0, 1, base 2 is not a valid base 2 number. The answer is false. Now, 0 up to 9, then A, B are the symbols of the base 11. Again, here we have 12 symbols. We have 12 symbols. Base 11 should have 11 symbols. 0 to 9 makes 10 symbols, followed by A, 11. So, base 11 symbols should go from 0 to 9, then followed by A. So, B is not a valid base 11 symbol. So, the answer is false. As you revise your lesson, do the following assignment. In this assignment, you expect to fill in blank spaces. In the first question, you're supposed to complete the blast blank space. Base P has dash number of symbols. Base P has dash number of symbols. Fill in the blank space with the correct answer. The symbols zero up to nine followed by A, B, and C are for base dash. You are expected to use the concepts we've learned so far to write the correct base. Dash is an example of a valid binary number. You are expected to use your knowledge on how to train numbers to propose any correct binary number. Remember, binary is the base two number system. We use the following resources to prepare this lesson. Gateway to Computer Science for GC Ordinary Level by Conrad VM. Then the following web resources. For more information on this lesson and more exercises, feel free to consult your textbook. Our next lesson will be on the number system, more precisely addition and subtraction of base 2, base 8, and base 16 numbers. Una tege majang matege ndom mane tambia ninya ne njobya yen ngani bana matege mot ngani la kiri watege ndom esetina bia dinki do mane tambia ninya ne njobya yen tam tama mote tam zabike tam tama tonge tam zabike tam tam tama mote tam zabike mane tambia ninya